Hey everyone, welcome back to Network Advisor. I'm Steve. Hey, I'm excited today to share with you a really cool little tool called the Link IQ by Fluke Networks. And you might also be asking yourself, why has Steve got a necktie on today? That's because today I want to reminisce about my days as a network administrator. And as such, some of the headaches that I used to go through managing the cabling infrastructure or the, the, the network plant. This little tool really helps get rid of some of those problems. Some of the scenarios you might think about as a network administrator might encounter is managing ports out on the, the floor that are unlabeled or maybe connectivity issues. Is it the software? Is it the network card and the device? Is it the cable between the network card and the wall? Or is it the cable? Or is it the switch? This device can help me solve that problem. Also, we manage remote locations. So think about a location that's too far for you to practically travel to. This device has got a mode in it that's so simple to use. It's just a simple auto test button. You just push it and let it do its thing. You can certainly mail that out and have any non-IT type person run this for you so that you could identify a potential problem or identify a jack and what switchboard it's on. That's something the Link IQ can do that's really cool. It can connect to the switch and identify what the switch name is, what port it's connected to, and what VLAN it's in. That's huge when you're trying to identify a port location and make the necessary provisioning changes that you need to from the remote end. Also, there's power over Ethernet. You think about all these devices now that need PoE, you know, access points and cameras, but they all draw different what are known as classes of power. And the Link IQ can identify the class of power and then verify that it's capable of supporting that power load. All right, so it's not just enough to just simply have a port that's PoE capable. It has to be able to meet the power load expectations for that port. All right, all those things I just listed, I'm gonna go into a little more specifics, demonstrate the product, let you see how easy it is, and kind of show you a little more in detail how it can solve these headaches and possibly help you justify the return on investment for such a tool. All right, let's get started. Okay, network administrator scenario number one, the mystery jack. So this is a wall outlet in an office. It's Friday afternoon and I've just been informed by my boss that there's a VIP employee moving into this office on Monday morning and I need to have it ready to go. Now do I have time to call the cable vendor? And do I have any markings on this jack? No, thus the mystery jack. So I can take my Link IQ and I can identify these ports and see what's on them and where they go. So let me plug it into here. I'm gonna run the auto test. Looks like this is connected to a switch called CAT3560. It offers 10 base T and 100 base T and it's on port 23. Well, this is great. So now I know what switch this is on and what port it's on. I should be able to work backwards and find out exactly where this is, or if this switch is good enough for what I need, I can just have the switch provisioned appropriately for the new person starting on Monday. But let's go further. Let's see what these other jacks do. Let's go to this one. Run the auto test. So this is telling me that it found a cable that's 98 feet long. Uh, there's no remote ID, meaning there's nothing plugged in the other end to help do additional diagnostics. And there's no switch on this. Okay, that's good to know. And there's also a way I can actually use this device to help ID this cable in the wire closet, but we'll get to that later. Let's check the next jack. Okay, running the auto test again. Ooh, now this is better. Now I'm connected to a switch that offers 10, 100, and 1 gig. So this might be a better solution for me. I can also, again, see what the name of the switch is. BLFLWR01. I can see exactly what port it's on, which is great. Because if the switch is fine, I can just have the switch person reconfigure the port appropriately. Or, at the very least, I should be able to work backwards and I should be able to look at something that tells me where that switch is in what wiring closet and then just work backwards to find the patch panel. And moreover, 
I can see that it's got PoE because it's testing the PoE down here on the bottom half of the screen. So that's good to know too because this new person might need to have a voice over IP phone which would need power over ethernet. Okay, great. All right, network administrator headache number two. Dealing with intermittent problems or complete failure of remote power over ethernet devices. And there's a lot of points of failure. There could be the switch, the cable, uh, there could be something wrong with the device itself. Well, before you immediately start working with the manufacturer's support to try to identify whether the device is having issues, don't you want to make sure that the power over ethernet and the cable are good? So in this instance, what I need to know for sure is that the power over ethernet that's being supplied for my device is in fact what the device requires. All power over ethernet is not created equal. There's different classes of power over ethernet, meaning different wattages. There could be 13 watt, 25, 51, 70, etc. And then there's also different standards. There's four wire and eight wire. So my point is, before you start immediately going to the vendor to find out whether or not there's something wrong with the device, at least make sure that you know what's going on, what's coming out the end of the wire. All right, so with the Link IQ, I can just run auto test with it plugged into the wire that is coming from the uh, access point. You can see down here it's running the power over ethernet portion of the test. All right, so I am getting, looks like class three, which is 13 watts and uh, 51 volts, so that's fine. Uh, but it is only four wire. Now this, in reality, this access point probably runs fine on either four wire or eight wire. My point is being able to use a device like this to pinpoint whether or not what is required by the device is being supplied in reality. This can save a tremendous amount of time before you get on the phone to support for that device manufacturer and spend two hours troubleshooting whether the device is any good. All right, so what about the remote office? An office you have that's too far to practically drive to, there's no qualified IT staff at that location, and you're trying to troubleshoot a problem with no remote visibility. You've got a PC or a piece of equipment that can't connect, and you're trying to troubleshoot over the phone. It can be highly frustrating. Well, with the Link IQ, for a relatively nominal cost, you could overnight that device to the location. It gives you a tremendous amount of visibility because now you've got something that can be plugged into wall outlets, into wiring closets. It's super simple to operate and the person can read to you what's on the screen. So it's kind of a no-brainer. Okay, here's a familiar scene. So this was our mystery jack earlier, except it's not a mystery anymore because I've labeled it. We've got Cat6, Cat5e, and Cat6a. The point in this segment is to demonstrate cable validation. You use this thing called a remote ID that you put at the other end of the cable. So we'll go back to the patch panel and we'll put it in the CAT5E slot. Now back at the outlet we're going to test the CAT5E but before we do we can adjust the different speed parameters in the settings. So we go into the settings spot and we go to where the uh, speed tests are and you can choose. I want to test up to 2.5, 5, or even 10. Well, the application, let's pretend, needs 5G. And normally you would say Cat5e maxes out at 1 gig. But what if that cable is actually capable of 5G? Is it necessary to rip out the cable and replace it? All right, now let's do the Cat6 cable. Move my remote ID into the Cat6 at the patch panel. Move my patch cable run the test. I think what you're going to find interesting about this is that the difference between Cat5e and Cat6 under some circumstances is not that dramatic. 
I'm not saying that you don't need CAT6 cable, but as you can see, the performance testing actually turned out to be the same for these two. Now let's go to CAT6A, move my remote ID once more. Back at the outlet. And now I want to change my speed limit up to 10 gig so that I can test out the full capability of the CAT6A cable, which is supposed to be able to support 10 gig throughput. Whoops, might have a problem here. I'm gonna to have to take a look at this cable and see what's going on. Okay, we're back. If you remember a minute ago, I couldn't get the CAT6A cable to test out at the full 10 gig capacity. So what I did was, and this is what you could do too if you're testing something and it fails, is you can check your terminations. So your terminations have to be, you know, visually inspect them. Also make sure you don't have too much slack where, you know, between the jacket and where the, and where the uh, housing of the uh, keystone starts. I re-terminated it on the patch panel too. Now, ironically, that didn't fix it. So I was perplexed, and then I realized, you know, this is a lab environment, and I don't have a 100-foot office, but I did want this to be a 100-foot cable. So a majority of the cable is coiled up tightly in the ceiling, and once I took it and spread that out a little bit on the floor, it solved the problem of the uh, speed test. So note to self is that uh, when you... Uh, coil up cables a little bit too tightly with your slack, you can actually degrade the performance a little bit. All right, let's give it another whirl here. Do the auto test. And here we go. And there we go. There's our 10 gig. Wonderful. Okay, so what good is all this data if we can't do something with it besides look at it on the screen? Well, this is called Linkware. So Fluke Networks makes software called Linkware that supports all their devices, one of which is the Link IQ. So I'm connecting to the Link IQ, which is connected to a computer with a USB cable. So I can import all the records or some of the records. I'm going to import all the records from the testing I've been doing in my lab. And then once they're in there, I've got a catalog of records I can go browse. All right, so here's all my cables. If I want to look at one cable in particular, I can do so. This would give me the same information that was on the Link IQ unit itself, except now I have a way to manage it digitally. The other thing I think is cool is that you can modify the, some of the metadata fields. You can down here and click on properties. And so you can see all these different things I could modify or leave notes. So if there was something particular about a location you wanted to make a notation about, you've got that option. Anyway, so that's called Linkware, and you can download that for free. All right, one last little cool thing I want to leave you with is they have an online virtual demo. Uh, I put the link to it in the description for this video. And when you click on that link, you'll land on this page. If you go to where it says Explore Link IQ, right here where my mouse is, and then it puts this virtual demo online here where you can push the buttons yourself. So you, if you wanted to explore some of the menus a little more close up, uh, that would give you the opportunity to do that virtually. All right, so thought that was pretty cool. Check it out. All right, so there you have it. Managing the network is tough enough without having to make wild guesses about the suitability of the cabling infrastructure. Not to mention having to worry about expensive vendor calls or what might turn out not to be cable anyway. And then, of course, there was the remote scenarios I talked about where I think that the Link IQ would certainly probably pay for itself after a few incidents of that. Well, anyway, you can decide. I appreciate you spending time with me. I hope you found that helpful. We'll see you next time.